Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Tonight we will be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 through verse 29. Again, we'll be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 through verse 29. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my life. I give you thanks for my beautiful wife, Teresa, and my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask in your name. May there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken may the holy spirit be stirred up inside of us and may we have the courage to apply these verses in our daily lives i ask this in the name of god the father jesus christ the son and the holy spirit amen brothers and sisters we are in for some good reading tonight matthew chapter 7 is a great and powerful chapter. Let us begin. Jesus teaches about criticizing others. Chapter 7, verse 1. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet, and then turn and tear you to pieces. Jesus teaches about asking, seeking, knocking. Verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who who ask him. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Jesus teaches about the way to heaven. Verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it 
but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Jesus teaches about fruit in people's lives. Verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Jesus teaches about those who build houses on rock and sand. Verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his rock who built his house on the rock. The rain came down. The streams rose and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down. The streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and did not as their teachers of the law. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break down this awesome chapter. Verses 1 and 2 reads the following. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus tells us to examine our own motives and conduct instead of judging others. Jesus tells us to examine our own motives and conduct instead of judging others. The traits that bother us in others are often the habits we dislike in ourselves. Our untamed bad habits and behavior patterns are the very ones that we most want to change in others. Do you find it easy to magnify others' faults while, exclu while excusing your own? 
this was something that I struggled with for a long time uh, throughout my youth. I would always point out others' faults, blame others for everything. And my cousin, Derek West, rest in peace, when I was in my early 20s, actually confronted me and me being that way and made me realize that I needed to take responsibility for my own actions. And even though he's not with us today, I, I thanked him then and I still do thank him for helping me uh, with that. So yes, I was one of those people that would magnify other people's faults while at the same time excusing my own. Now that I have a, a relationship with God and I have a, a much better understanding of his word, when I do something right away, I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit or I'll realize I'm starting to do something that I shouldn't be doing and I'll repent. Even in my dreams, sometimes I have dreams and I won't, in some dreams I won't even sin or, 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 or do the sin in my dream. Uh, there are some times in my dreams uh, where I do sin and when I wake up, I'm just like, I'm like, man, like, what a horrible dream. And I repent and, and I pray and ask God for forgiveness for even thinking like that in my dreams. And I just got to give glory to God, to Jesus and the Holy Spirit for, for opening up my eyes and my heart and my mind and my soul to realize the evil uh, that I am capable of doing and the renewing uh, uh, of my heart that, that he's given me a different heart. In the past, I used to enjoy sinning. Now I hate it. So the question was, do you find it easy to magnify others' faults while excusing your own? Like I said, uh, yes, I, I did f fall in that category. If you are ready to criticize someone, check to see if you deserve the same criticism. Judge yourself first and then lovingly forgive and help your neighbor. Judge yourself first, brothers and sisters, and then lovingly forgive and help your neighbor. Verses 1 through 5 reads the following. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye while all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Jesus' statement, do not judge, is against the kind of hypocritical, judgmental attitude that tears others down in order to build oneself up. It is not a blanket, a blanket statement against all critical thinking. 
but a call to be discerning rather than negative. Jesus said to expose false teachers. In chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. And Paul taught that we should exercise church discipline in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And trust God to be the final judge. You can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. Verse 6, brothers and sisters. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Pigs were unclean animals according to God's law, which you can read in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 8. Anyone who touched an unclean animal became ceremonially unclean and could not go to the temple to worship until the uncleanness was removed. Jesus says that we should not entrust holy teachings to unholy or unclean people. It is futile to try to teach holy concepts to people who don't want to listen and will only tear apart what we say. We should not stop giving God's word to unbelievers, but we should be wise and discerning in what we teach to whom, so that we will not be wasting our time. Verse 7 and 8, brothers and sisters. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus tells us to persist in pursuing God. People often give up after a few half-hearted efforts and conclude that God cannot be found. But knowing God takes faith, focus, and follow-through. And Jesus assures us that we will be rewarded. Don't give up in your efforts to seek God, brothers and sisters. Continue to ask him for more knowledge, more patience, more wisdom, more love, and more understanding. He will give them to you. Amen. Verses 9 and 10. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? The child, in Jesus' example, asked his father for bread and fish, good and necessary items. If the child had asked for for a poisonous snake, would the wise father have granted his request? Well, no. A poisonous snake could bite him and, and kill him. Sometimes, God knows we are praying for snakes. Woohoo! Sometimes, God knows that we are praying for snakes and does not give us what we ask for, even though we, per we persist in our prayers. As we learn to know God better as a loving Father, we learn to ask for what is good for us, and then He grants it. Amen. 
Verse 11. If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Christ is showing us the heart of God the Father. God is not selfish, begrudging, or stingy. And we don't have to beg or grovel as we come with our request. He is a loving Father who understands, cares, and comforts. If humans can be kind, imagine how kind God, the creator of kindness, can be. Jesus used the expression, if you, then though you are evil, to contrast sinful and fallible human beings with the holy and perfect God. Verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. This is commonly known as the golden rule. In many religions, it is stated negatively. Don't do to others what you don't want done to you. By stating it Positively, Jesus made it more significant. It is not very hard to refrain from harming others. It is much more difficult to take the initiative in doing something good for them. The golden rule, as Jesus formulated it, is the foundation of active goodness and mercy. The kind of love God shows to us every day. Think of a good and merciful action you can take today, brothers and sisters. Verses 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it me and my mother were just talking about this verse today while we were eating uh, our Breakfast slash lunch after church. The gate that leads to eternal life, as you read in John chapter 10, verse 7 through 9, is called narrow. This does not mean that it is difficult to become a Christian. But there is only one way to live eternally with God, and only a few that decide to walk that road. Believing in Jesus is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. The only way to heaven is believing in Jesus. Because he alone died for our sins and made us right before God. Living his way may not be popular, brothers and sisters, but it is true and right. Thank God there is only one way. And, you know, I've had conversations before with, with, with uh, my, some of my own family members. I have family members who um, have expressed to me before that they think as long as you live a good life, and you're a good person, that you will go to heaven. And my response to them, then is this my same response now. That is not the case. Not one of us is capable of being good. 
aside from that, the Bible teaches us different. This right here, this these these two verses. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction that many enter through it. Wide is the road that leads to destruction that many enter through it. If there was no one that was going to go to hell, that verse would not be there, brothers and sisters. Jesus would not have said these words. But Jesus told us that many will enter through the gate that is broad and wide and it leads to destruction. And then in 14 it says, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. So small is the gate and narrow is the road and only few will find it. See, if everybody was going to go to heaven, Jesus wouldn't have even said these words. He wouldn't have even given this parable, this teaching. And this is not the only spot where it talks about hell, brothers and sisters. And like I was talking with my mom today, and I didn't even know that I was going to be reading this, this verse today. But like I was telling my mom, I go, Mom, there is only one way, one path, one road narrow that, that that leads to heaven and it's jesus jesus is the only way jesus is the answer that is the only path to heaven and if jesus is the only path to heaven what does that mean that means that every other path in life will lead you to hell will lead you to destruction, will lead you to, to, to the eternal lake of fire. Brothers and sisters, I am not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this out of love. There is only one path that leads to heaven, and it is Jesus. That's scary. That's scary for, for my family members and my friends and my loved ones who deny them. That's scary because I was once on that wide road to destruction. And I did not even realize that I was on that path. I thought I was good. I thought I was just doing me, living my life. Like, oh yeah, you know, I know who Jesus is. I say some prayers. But yet I'm still going to enjoy uh, uh, the, the, the sins uh, 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 that I was stuck in. The sins, uh, my addictions, my, my, my lust, my pride, my anger, my hate, my greed. All, the, all these things, I, I, all these sins I loved, I enjoyed doing them. And I seen nothing wrong with doing them. And we have a lot of brothers and sisters out there who are living like that, who are living the, the way I was living. And it's for, it's for two, you know, a couple of different reasons. Maybe number one, no one's never have given the time to, 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 to tell them this verse. Maybe number two, they've never even picked up the word, the living God, the Bible, to read for themselves. Maybe number three, they just don't believe. You know, it, it couldn't say it much clearer. I hate to break the news to the people that, that believe that everyone is going to go to heaven. Actually, no. I don't hate it. I, I, I'm declaring the truth. And it's not my opinion. 
It is the word of God. And the truth of the matter is that not everyone's going to go to heaven. You have to make a decision. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the true living God? Or are you going to serve the devil? And whoever you serve, your actions are going to show it. Your heart, the way you love and forgive, will show it. And for the people out there that, that think, oh, I don't need God, I'm a good person, I'm sorry. You're on the wide path. Because, because the only path that leads to heaven, there's only one path, and that is King Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua. He is the only way to heaven. That is a powerful two verses. Verse 15, brothers and sisters. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. False prophets were common in Old Testament times. They prophesied only what the king and the people wanted to hear, claiming it was God's message. False teachers are just as common today. Jesus says to beware of those whose words sound religious, but who are motivated by money, fame, or power. Jesus says to beware of those whose words sound religious, but, are, but who are motivated by money, fame, or power. You can tell who they are because in their teaching they minimize Christ and glorify themselves. Verse 20. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. We should Evaluate teachers' words by examining their lives. Just as trees are consistent in the kind of fruit they produce, good teachers consistently exhibit good behavior and high moral character as they attempt to live out the truths of Scripture. This does not mean we should have witch hunts throwing out church school teachers, pastors, and others who are less than perfect. Every one of us is subject to sin, and we must show the same mercy to others that we need for ourselves. When Jesus talks about bad trees, he means teachers who deliberately teach false doctrine. When Jesus talks about bad trees, he means teachers who deliberately teach false doctrine. We must examine the teacher's motives and direction they are taking and the results they are seeking. Now look here, brothers and sisters, just to, to, to go back to, to what I was talking about, that, that not everyone's going to go to heaven. Verse 18 and verse 19. Just listen to this. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. 
Verse 19, pay attention. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Who are the trees? We are the trees. We are the trees. Are we going to bear good fruit? If you're a good tree, you're going to bear good fruit. But if you are a bad tree, you will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What do you think that means? Cut down and thrown into the fire. Again, is referring to hell. Now, brothers and sisters, I used to be a bad tree. I used to bear bad fruit. I used to be on a path to hell. Does it mean that if you're a bad tree right now, that you're automatically going to go to hell? Well, if you die right now and you do not repent, and you do not, and you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, King, and Savior as the way, yes. However, if you repent, turn away from your sinful life, Turn to Jesus, who is the answer. To Jesus, who died for our sins. He can, 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 can take us and graft us inside of him. He can make us a new tree. We can be reborn again. We do not have to be a bad tree. You can choose right now, today, if you are a bad tree and if you're bearing bad fruit, right now you can choose to, 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 to change, to, to leave the past, to turn away from, 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 from our sinful ways and turn to Jesus, who's the only one who can save us. And we can start following him. We can start learning from him. We can, we can become his disciple. And we can go out and teach others to be disciples. And we can start with our own household. See, like when I was talking with my mom earlier. And for example, like, like that thief on the cross who repented. And, 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 he, and he told Jesus, Remember me when you enter into your kingdom, Lord. And Jesus said, Surely today you will be with me in paradise. See, that thief repented at the end of his life. And Jesus told him, Surely you will be with me in paradise. So if you repent in your last breath, truly, truly repent and accept Jesus, will Jesus take you? Yes, he will, because he's a loving God. However, think about this. If you lived a whole life of, of sin and you repent in that last moment, right? And you do get into heaven. What about your children? What about your, your family? What about your, your friends? What about your loved ones who've seen you your whole life living this sinful way and maybe they didn't know that you repented before you died? What about them? What are we teaching our children? What are we teaching our loved ones? See, that is why it is important to turn away now. Not gamble with our soul and say, well, maybe well, later I will repent. Later I will accept Jesus. No. Repent now. Accept Jesus now. Because tomorrow is not promised. Tell your loved ones about Jesus. Share the good news about Jesus to everyone you come in contact with. That's the only conversation that, that's worth anything. Not no conversation about football, baseball, 
anything. All those conversations are, are, if it's not about God or Jesus, every single conversation is just filler. The only conversation that's ever really worth anything of any value is when you're talking about Jesus. Talking about what Jesus has done for you in your life. Talking about what Jesus already did for us. Talking about what he can do for, for whoever you're talking to. Because then you are sowing seeds for the kingdom of God. So again, there, there's another verse, and there's many other verses, where it talks about hell. I know for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. And I hope that for you and your household, that you will serve the Lord too. <sighs> Told you guys this is going to be a great chapter. Verse 21. Verse 21 through 23, actually. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles then i will say, then i will tell them plainly i never knew you away from me you evil doers some self-professed athletes can talk a great game but that tells you nothing about their athletic skills and not everyone who talks about heaven belongs to god's kingdom Jesus is more concerned about our walk than our talk. He wants us to do right, not just say the right words. Your house, which represents your life, as it says in chapter 724, will withstand the storms of life only if you do what is right instead of just talking about it what you do cannot be separated from what you believe jesus exposed those people who sounded religious but had no personal relationship with him on that day the day of judgment only our relationship with jesus christ our acceptance of him as savior and our obedience to him will matter period many people think that if they are good people and say religious things they will be rewarded with eternal life in reality faith in christ is what will count at the judgment that day is the final day of reckoning when God will settle all accounts, judging sin and rewarding faith. Again, here is another verse where he's talking about people going to hell. Right there in, in verse 22, it says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Verse 23. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Those are some words I never want to hear. Those are some words I never want my loved ones to hear. Those are some words I never want anyone who's watching this video and your loved ones ever to hear. Verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. To build on the rock means 
to be a hearing, responding disciple, not a phony, superficial one. Practicing obedience becomes the solid foundation to weather the storms of life. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Like a house of cards, the fool's life crumbles. Most people do not deliberately seek to build on a false or inferior foundation. Instead, they just don't think about their life's purpose. Many people are headed for destruction, not out of stubbornness, but out of thoughtlessness. Part of our responsibility as believers is to help others stop and think about where their lives are headed and to point out the consequences of ignoring Christ's message. And what is the consequence of ignoring Christ's message? Is to be thrown into the fire. Simple. You're either with Jesus or you're with the enemy, who's the devil. There is no other path that leads to heaven other than Jesus, than Yeshua. He is the only, Jesus is the only answer and Jesus is the only way to the Father. Verse 29, 28 and 29. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. The teachers of the law, religious scholars, often cited traditions and quoted authorities to support their arguments and interpretations. But Jesus spoke with a new authority, his own. He didn't need to quote anyone because he was the original word as you read in John chapter 1 verse 1. And what does John chapter 1 verse 1 say? It says, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Who is that word? Jesus. And what is Jesus? And the word was God. Jesus is the only way, brothers and sisters. Whew. Great, great reading. I, I told you guys this was going to be a powerful reading, a great reading, and, <laughs> and God delivered. You know, for those of you out there who have never read chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, this is a great chapter to read and to share with your loved ones. The whole Bible is, this is, a, it's a great one, and you can see why. For my brothers and sisters out there who have read this before, as myself, just what a great reminder. And, and. You know, it's time to take an inventory of ourselves. And where do we line up? Are we lining up with Jesus? Are we lining up with the world? And if we're not lining up with Jesus, then ask for God to give you the discernment, the, the courage and the power and the strength and the wisdom to let go of every other path and only to focus on the one road, which is him. Great, great reading, brothers and sisters. I know it went long, but uh, I definitely think it was worth it. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to give you thanks for tonight's reading. What a powerful reading. Just thank you, Jesus. 
I just want to thank you for 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 plucking me off of that that road to destruction. For putting me on that narrow road to you, Lord Jesus. And I just want to ask you, Lord Jesus, for myself and everyone that's watching, remove anything and everything that is not of you out of our lives and only fill us with you, Lord. Remove all other paths in our lives and keep us on that straight and narrow path to you, Lord. Give us the courage and the wisdom and the discernment and the knowledge and the will to continue on that narrow path. Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me and everyone watching of our sins. And I ask that you give us a discerning heart, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, and that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. I ask that you heal us uh, of, of anything that, that, that's making us sick or causing us pain. I ask that, that you break all chains of, of, of addiction in us. Whether the addiction is, is, is smoking, drinking, drugging, lusting, money, power, greed. Break those chains in the name of Jesus. I ask that you break chains of sin. If there's any sin that we enjoy doing and, and if we choose to do it, I ask that, that you make us that the Holy Spirit makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from these sins. I give you thanks for, for, for my, my wife and my children. And I ask that you bless, heal, and protect them. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect all your prayer warriors and their loved ones. My mother, my, my, my grandmother, my sisters Liz and Yvette, Rebecca, Jessica, Joseph, Christian, Chris, Sonia West, Sophia Borge, Sister Christy, Sister Demetria, Sister Mirka, Sister Kayla, Brother Anthony Trejo, Brother Chris Stroops, Brother Alvin, Brother Floyd, Brother Ryan and his mother. I ask that, that, that you give us spiritual protection, Lord. I ask for those of us that are struggling in our marriage that you renew our marriage. That you teach us how to be the, the husband, wives, brother, sister, son, daughter, father, mother. That you want us to be, Lord. I ask that those of us that's mourning the, the, the loss of a loved one, Lord, that you that you comfort us. I ask for those of us that's looking for a job, that, that you help us find the correct job. I ask for, for our enemies that you teach us how, how to love our enemies. And give us a forgiving heart to our enemies. And that you change our enemies from enemies and turn them into brothers and sisters in Christ. I ask for, for those that, that are homeless, those that are hungry, that you send them one of your children, Lord, that, that can help them maybe find a place to stay, that can give them a warm meal in their stomach. I just ask for protections and blessings for all of us. I ask for you to bless, heal, and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry, everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran and Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, and everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect, and give discernment and continue to lead our pastors and their wives and children, pastors, Brian Trejo, Angel Morales, David, and, and Angel Rocha. I ask that you just 
awaken a fire in us, Lord, to go out and be the hands and feet of the church, Lord. That you awaken a fire in us, Lord, to every day put in work for your kingdom. And I ask this in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you, brothers and sisters. For those of you who stuck out uh, the whole hour video, God bless you. I know he's blessed me with, with this reading tonight. And I hope that you receive his blessing. I love you. And we'll continue reading together. Good night.